Hello my keto peeps, it's Samaya and welcome back to my channel, I Don't Share Code. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to fry larger piece bone-in chicken keto style. So let's get started. Again, today's video is sponsored by Wholesome Provision. They are a company located right here in the US and they specialize in making keto friendly and low carb friendly products. Visit their website today and you will find a whole bunch of products that will meet your low carb needs. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner low carb cook or more advanced low carb cook, or if you're not looking to cook at all and you want something that's already prepared, you will be able to find several options that will suit your needs. So I'm gonna leave a link to their website in the description of today's video. Now let's jump into this recipe. Now to start off today, let me just say, I know I have my hair wrap on. It is humid and hot in Texas and my hair is just not trying to behave. It is just being super frizzy and wavy. So I will be filming this series of videos with my head dressing on. So no, it's not done by accident. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Now, I have chosen to do two um, chicken thighs for you guys. And this, even though I showed you guys how to do like chicken tenders in a previous video, the steps for doing bone-in chicken, like larger pieces of chicken, is a little bit different. And I discovered that like in the beginning when probably like six months into my keto journey and I was just getting started with lupin flour, I noticed that frying with lupin flour and even with baking, you will notice that it will brown and darken very fast. That includes with frying. So I did not like the look or the taste that came about when I would try to do fried chicken because you would have to cook it obviously long enough for the chicken to get done, but the flour would then be overcooked and it just wasn't a great visual or a great taste. So to be able to enjoy delicious fried chicken, I knew I was going to have to pre-cook the chicken first and then par fry it after. Now that may seem like a lot of work, but for me it was entirely worth it because I love the way it turns out. It's so perfect and so amazing every single time. Now you can cook this in a couple different ways. For me, I'm going to be using my sous vide, but you can also take your chicken, you can bake it in the oven for about an hour at like 375 and just check and make sure it's the right temperature in the middle. I think for chicken, it's somewhere between, I think maybe 167 to 170, something like that. I'm not sure of the exact number, but I think it's somewhere in there. So you can bake it off in the oven or you can even steam it or poach it, however you wanna be able to cook it to get it to the point of doneness and then getting it to the point of frying. So for me, I'm gonna be using the sous vide because I love this method. It's just foolproof and it just works the best if you ask me. Now you can get a sous vide wand very cheap these days. And so if you don't already have one and you might be looking in the market for one, I will leave a link to a couple of different kinds. I'll leave the link to this one. If you already have one, great. Perfect. What you're gonna wanna do is, I've already got mine going here. I've got it set to 168 degrees and I'm gonna be cooking my chicken in here for three hours. So I've already got this going, it's already to temp, so let's deal with our chicken. Now I'm just gonna be putting a little bit of seasoning on here, nothing special. I'm gonna be adding some salt. Well, I am gonna be adding one special thing today because I wanted to try this and I'll let you guys know as soon as I grab it. And I'm gonna be adding some pepper. And now I'm gonna be 
using this Greek spice here and it's made by Rebel Roots and you can find this on Wholesome Provisions website. I have yet to try this yet. So I really wanted to give it a try because I didn't want to, I didn't know what I was going to use it for, but it says that it works well on all different types of meat. So I decided to give it a whirl for this today. So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some of this on there. Mm, the smell is very unique. It really is. I'm not sure what all is in this. Let's see. Okay, so it's got some Mediterranean oregano, some onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, parsley, um, some cinnamon. I could smell the cinnamon and the nutmeg. I could totally smell those in here. And, um... It's got something else in here that I am totally not going to embarrass myself and try to pronounce, but it's spelled K-O-R-I-N-T-J-E. If you know what that is, awesome, because I don't know how to pronounce it and I don't want to mess it up. So it has a great smell. You can definitely smell the cinnamon and the nutmeg. I wasn't sure I was smelling that right, which is why I looked for the ingredients. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and do the other side. And since I just touched this raw chicken, I don't want to stick it back into my salt, so I'm going to wash my hands. All right, now that that's ready, I'm going to go ahead and get it put into um, a bag so I can vacuum seal it closed and we can get it into the sous vide. Okay, now that I have my chicken in the bag, I'm just going to wipe the lip of this bag off because we are going to be sealing it and we wanna make sure that it gets a nice seal so we don't want any of the chicken juice and whatnot on here. Okay, now, today I'm gonna to be using my chamber vacuum sealer here, and I love this thing, you guys, I really do. It's so great for being able to vacuum seal things with the liquid clothes, so doing soups and stuff like that, so perfect to put in here. And this one is made by Avid Armor. Now, if you don't have one of these, um, like a chamber one, totally fine. You don't need to have one of these. You can use one of these regular ones that you can find like this to vacuum seal it. And uh, I, this is also an Avid Armor. I really love their products. So I will be leaving links to both of these in the description of this video. This one here is fairly cheap. I think I got this for like 40 bucks or less. So, and it works so amazingly well. I love this and I use it all the time for like bigger things that I can't put into my chamber here. And this one is what I leave out on my counter for daily use. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this into okay now hopefully you guys can see up there above me what it looks like in here just in case you're interested i know i get a lot of questions about um the stuff my appliances and gadgets that i have in the kitchen so i'll try to give you guys you know a brief showing of them when i can in the videos so as you can see it's in the chamber here and you're just going to want to put it onto this heat sealing part right here there's a little clip you just want to push that down you're going to close the lid so i'm going to let it vacuum for 40 seconds and seal for four seconds and you guys should be able to see what is going on inside here if you're interested i will try to speed through that though so you guys don't have to watch it all the way but there's a button that says vacuum seal and that's what you're going to want to press and i'm going to mute this because this thing is really loud Okay, if you guys can see up there, it looks so amazing. It's so fantastic. I love this thing because you get the kind of seal on it that you would get from like, you know, if you bought this at a grocery store, it is just so perfect and I absolutely love it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna stick this into my water bath here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in to my 
sous vide container here and hopefully you guys can get somewhat of a visual it's a black container so you might not be able to see too well into here so i'm not gonna really um try to focus it that much on here because it's kind of hard to see it just looks solid black but i'm gonna go ahead put my chicken in and we're gonna let this cook for three hours at 168 degrees and i will come back and we will get to the fun part of making this keto fried chicken all right so it has been three hours actually it's been a little more than that but that is the beauty of a sous vide once it's in there and it's set to that temperature it's not going to go past that so your food is not going to come out overcooked it's going to keep it right at that perfect temperature for you so i'm going to go ahead and cut this open and get my chicken out now my chicken looks absolutely great it is perfectly cooked and done now we just want to finish this off and what the point of this is is just to cook the flour we're not cooking the chicken so we just want to get it in get it browned flip it over get it browned again and that's it it's done so i'm going to go ahead and get it going here now in this bowl here i have some cashew milk that i put two tablespoons of some buttermilk powder in and then i seasoned it with salt pepper and yes the greek spice and then in my bowl here i have half a cup of lupin flour half a cup of oat fiber and half a cup of wheat protein isolate 8000 and then i um, put in the exact same spices the salt the pepper and the greek spice so what i want to do now is just so we can get some nice crumbly bits i'm just going to put a little bit of this liquid in here And I'm just gonna move it around with a fork just so we can get like some little chunks of flour and stuff all right now I'm gonna go ahead and put my chicken into the buttermilk mixture here and then I'm gonna go right into my flour getting it all nice and coated and I'm going to do my other piece okay so I'm gonna get these out the way and then we're gonna get it fried okay so I've got some duck fat here heating and I totally just used this in a video I literally just got done before finishing this I did some fried fish I didn't feel like changing the oil so and we're just gonna go ahead and get that put in skin side down And as I said, we're just par frying this. We just want to get color on the flour and then it's coming right out. Okay guys, and that's it. They probably cooked maybe 90 seconds per side. That's really all you wanna do. So I'm gonna get this out of the way and then I'm gonna go ahead and try this for you guys. All right, that's it you guys. This is keto fried chicken. And while there is that bit of wait time while it cooks in your sous vide, I mean really, you could be doing any other thing while your dinner is getting ready. This is still a very minimal effort dish right here because you don't do much. You just season it, put it in the bag, stick it in the sous vide, do some other stuff, take it out and do a few minutes of frying and that's it. Your dinner is ready. Now, here's the one thing I did not think about when I decided to make this video for today. I thought to myself, okay, we'll do two pieces of chicken. That'll be perfect for a picture. Yeah, but not so perfect for me to be able to try it on camera because now I'm gonna ruin my picture. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get a little bit of a piece off of here that I can be able to, you know, kind of cover with the other piece of chicken and that way you won't be able to tell that i took a piece off of it but you guys will know <laughs> now hopefully the picture you won't be able to tell on the thumbnail that i took a little piece off of there and hopefully that will work just fine and this is going through 
so easy, you guys. Like, I just used a butter knife to cut this chicken. That's how juicy it is. That's how tender it is. That's how perfectly cooked it is. And what would fried chicken be without hot sauce? So I've got some hot sauce here that I made, and I'm just gonna go ahead and just toss a little bit of this onto there. Oh my gosh. Okay, you guys. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. seem like I'm eating low carb fried chicken. That's fantastic. Like absolutely friggin' fantastic. I wish I can dig in for another piece, but I've got a photo to take. And now that I do this, it looks like it's gonna work. <laughs> I cut that little piece off of there and now I've got a way to still take my photo. But I get done taking pictures of this chicken for the thumbnail I'm totally gonna dig into this if you guys didn't see the fried fish video yet oh my goodness you gotta watch that 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 fish is amazing I think I might have a piece of fish and chicken for my breakfast this morning I am not even joking I'm not kidding that is exactly what I think I'm gonna do piece of fish piece of chicken make a salad Boy, that is good, you guys. So that's gonna be all I have for you today. This right here, you guys, is keto fried chicken. If you wanna make larger pieces of chicken with the bone in, this is the best way to do it without over cooking your flour. It's gonna come out perfect. It's gonna come out so amazing. The crust is absolutely to die for. I can't. I can't stress that enough. I hope you guys try this. If you do, let me know how it worked for you. Let me know what you thought of it, what your family thought of it. Hopefully it'll become a new favorite of yours. But I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here because it is storming here and I need to wrap up. So if you like this video, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. If you're new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button and don't forget to ding that little bell so you can get notifications every time I upload a new video. And until next time, you guys, bye.